the pocketbook 360 is almost the exact same size height and width and even really thickness as your standard CD jewel case um, it's a little bit heavier I really like the cover speaking of it's a hard plastic it pops right off and then you can just flip it and snap it on the back and once it's snapped in place it's not coming off easily it doesn't fall off you could knock it off but you'd have to really be trying really kind of keeps it protected in your purse or your pocket there are seven buttons over here on the side the silver directional pad which does up down left right the center button and then these two big side shoulder buttons here and then there's power button here all of these buttons can be customizable to do pretty much whatever you want and they'll also pull double duty so because the device uh, distinguishes between a short press and a long press so you can get 16 button match matches out of here down here is the power cable slot and then up here is the SD card expansion really well integrated it just has a spring that pops it right out whenever you press down with a fingernail um, much better than some implementations where you pretty much have to dig them out with tweezers this is well done uh, we press the power button and this little light's going to come on. This kind of lights up every time you communicate with the device to let you know it's doing something. We get this loading splash screen, which you can customize. I have one that has my name and phone number on it in case this gets lost. Once it's loaded up, it doesn't automatically load up the SD card. You do have to press a button. And so I'm going to press that, and the light's going to come on. Oh, it's thinking. And then we're going to see the splash screen again while it loads up the contents of the SD card. Um, so having an SD card does kind of uh, double your load up time, which is worth it to me. Both the Pocketbook 360 and the PRS have a whole slew of extras that I haven't even dived into because I don't really care about them. Uh, photo, dictionary, applications you can get and load from online, notes, calendar. Uh, and note that while I'm pointing these out, this isn't a touch screen. You do have to navigate entirely from the buttons. Touching isn't going to do anything here. Settings, this is a really powerful, really customizable device. You can set, you know, basics like language and keyboard, appearance, which is where you would set that splash screen. Key mapping, very useful, very important. And then one thing that I really like is this maintenance screen. Um, this device will let you do pretty much whatever you want to it pretty much very easily. Uh, the first option is format internal memory, which is basically a wipe it to exactly the way it was when I took it out of the box for the first time. Very useful if you decide you want to lend or sell or give away the device and you don't want any personal information on it. Or even if you just want to go back to your original firmware, you just format internal memory and poof, you're done. Um, tried this. It works great. Took maybe 10 minutes, not very long. Format SD card, sort of the same thing. You want to wipe your SD card from the device, you can do that. Clean slate basically sets all your books back to as if you'd never opened them before. So no bookmarks, no notes, no last read page, nothing like that. Backups configuration, restore configuration, and then calibrate G sensor, which is really nice. Um, the thing about this device that I like is that it does have a G sensor in it. And what that means is when you turn the device on, you've got all these buttons oriented on the right. So if you're holding and reading, you would hold and read like this with your finger pressing the buttons. But what sets this device apart is that it has a G sensor and it can be rotated in any, any direction and the buttons will kind of follow along. And that's where the 360 comes from. You can turn it in a circle. So I rotated it. Now my buttons are along the bottom and the screen has readjusted to match. And then if I rotate again, now I can read with my left hand. Um, one other thing I talked about, how this light lights up whenever the device is working. This is very useful. If you turn the device and it doesn't light up, then that lets you know that, that you didn't turn it in such a way that the G sensor noticed anything going on. Um, I have noticed that it's usually easier and better to go in, in kind of a circle from from left to down to right than to just flip from left to right which sometimes confuses the G sensor. Overall it works really well and I really like that option because it lets you switch hands while you're reading. 
Um, so let's dig into books. Up here in this area, up here is your last two red books, so you can just go directly to them. This does support a folder organization system. So I've got my stuff on my SD card organized by how I wanted it to come from Caliber. So, you know, you can drill down directly to things and, and you can nest, as far as you, I can tell, as deeply as you want. This, so these would be your books. If you just press a single press, it's just going to open the book with your usual reader. Uh, whatever is the default for that file type, you can set that in a configuration file on the device when you connect it to your computer. If you do a long press, you'll get a list of options, and one of the things is to which reader to open it with. Each reader has its own little quirks. Some people prefer the Adobe Reader to the FB Reader. Uh, it's, it's really going to come down to what you want. You can delete books directly off the device. Uh, add it to your favorites list, which you can access from the front screen. Really, I, you can do just so much. You can even copy the de copy the book from the SD card to the device, or vice versa. Um, so, you know, if you're techie and if you really like micromanaging your device, this is a dream come true. When the book opens, which is about the same amount of time that it takes to load for every other e-reader I've tried. You know, here's the screen. You do get that e-ink e flash whenever it refreshes, which is also pretty much standard. Everybody has that, it seems. Um, I've got it mapped so that a single press of this up arrow right here will zoom the text. So, you know, that's pretty much as far zoomed in as this particular book will let me. And then if you hit zoom past that, it'll go back to the zoomed out version and kind of cycle in a, in a, in a circle of zoom, zoom, zoom back. Um, overall, I can't really think of anything else to say about this device except just how very thoroughly happy I am with it. Um, I do like being able to rotate the device. In fact, let's see if we can look at that in a book. Um, being able to go from holding it with one hand while I'm doing something with the other to turning it to turning it again, and then in a matter of just a few seconds, having switched which hand is the dominant one is very powerful to me. Um, and you can go directly from this way to this way. It's just, oh, see, there it worked. Sometimes it gets a little fussy. You can actually do that manually. I have it set up so that the, the middle button brings up this options, and right there is a rotate. So you can just right off the bat say, you know what, I want you to rotate it in this direction, and it'll do it for you. Add new note to a new notepad. And now, if you see the on-screen keyboard, um, it's, I've got it set up right now as a QWERTY keyboard, but it's a QWERTY keyboard with um, basically quadrants. And so, like, if you were to press up, you'd get up here in the numbers right away. And if you were pressed down with this D-pad over here, then you'd come down here to these options. If I was to press left with the D-pad, I would come over to the QWE, ASD, ZX, C side. If I was to press right, it would take me directly over here. That, to me, really helps the keyboard navigation since you're having to use buttons because it means that you can real quickly drill to the exact button you want. Um, the other thing you'll notice is, and I don't know if you can hear it, the buttons on this device are very clicky. Um, some people care about this. I don't, but here, I'll see if you can kind of hear. There is a noticeable sound. Um, doesn't bother me. You do have to noticeably kind of press the buttons. Again, that doesn't bother me. Um, if you wanted something where you pressed a little bit less uh, firmly, uh, like my mother did, then maybe the Sony PRS would be uh, a better option.